Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be going over this seascape scene, which I made using Cinema 4D and Redshift. We're going to be diving into the lighting portion of this scene, specifically going over HDRIs, the sun and sky rig, and a bunch of other settings we can adjust in order to get the most realism out of this scene as possible. So I'm really excited to share this with you. This is an extract from one of my most popular Patreon videos. So there is a lot packed into this one, a lot of really useful tips and tricks which you can apply to your own work. Without further ado, I'm going to stop waffling and let you guys jump into the video. Enjoy. And let's do the tip that I showed in the Louis Paulson interior breakdown and I'm going to add a material override and we'll just exclude the glass from that. And now we're kind of working with just this basic clay setup, which is fine. So let's take our sun and sky and let's have a play with some angles and see what, what looks we can get. And this may also result to us having to change the angle of some things or the position of some things in order to get some interesting results. Now, I obviously know the lighting that I used in kind of the test version of this before I recorded the tutorial. And I went with just a simple kind of light hitting the corner here of the bed, which gave a nice contrast of shadow and light. So we get this kind of like light drawing our attention to the cliffs on the left here and the bed in the corner. And then also what that's going to allow us to do is use lighting from our little lamp here to create some nice artificial light inside. So I have obviously thought about this beforehand just in order to keep this tutorial a little bit more efficient, but there's some really interesting different lighting scenarios you can get. You could shift it to the other side where the lamp isn't as important, but now you get this really nice shadow coming off the chair and off the desk. And then the bed is in the shadow, which is kind of giving you more of this like daytime vibe where maybe you're sat at the desk and you know, the bed is in the shade and you're thinking about, you know, that will be used later on in the evening when it's sunset. Whereas this one feels like maybe more of like a morning light where the sun's just coming around, it's just shining on the bed and you're waking up, you still got the lamp on in the corner. So like these different lighting scenarios are kind of evoking different stories and different feelings towards the scene. So it's definitely worth exploring different setups to see what you can get. Or you could go for a simple kind of straight on sunset in the evening kind of vibe like this. And that is super nice as well. Like I said, for this particular scene, I think I'm going to go for this kind of shot here where it's kind of like this morning vibe of like the sun just hitting the bed where the sun's just creeping in. I think this looks pretty nice. So I'm just going to maybe put that there, maybe tilt it down a little bit, rotate that round. There we go. And usually what happens when I start to put the textures in is I'll come back to the lighting and, and refine it and again, have another play because the, the problem with where the sun is right now, because it's quite high in the sky, it's going to make some of the textures look a little bit flat because it's not hitting them from such a harsh angle. For example, you don't see like any super long shadows coming off any of these rocks and that means they will fall a little bit flat, but it will still look pretty good overall because of all the detail that we've put into the scene, but it's still worth us once we have textured it to have another look at lighting and seeing what different results we can get. This looks pretty good, but we can tweak a few things. So I'm going to go into the sun and I'm going to increase the scale. Obviously, if we increase it low, so we now get like this really soft look, which is actually quite nice, but I'm just going to go for something much more subtle. So I'm just going to increase the sun disk scale to something like maybe between five and 10. And that's just going to give us like a nice kind of soft blend uh, in the corner, which still has some harsh features to it, but overall has a bit of a kind of softier, softier, <laughs> a bit of a softer, dreamier look. So maybe something like seven, where it's just a slight fall off. Uh, it's not as harsh. I think that works pretty well. One thing which I've discussed before in a few tutorials is how I think the sun in the sky doesn't really give you the best lighting straight out the bat. But one thing we can do to fix this, and this is actually someone commented on my Louis Paulson breakdown video about, is using the portal light. Now, I've tried so many different methods for basically getting more GI bounces. One you can do is go into your overrides 
and bump up the GI intensity and you'll see that that will fill it with more kind of more light but it gives you this very bluish tint which I guess is representative of the blue sky so I guess it, it kind of makes sense but also what you can do is go into the sun itself go to the details contribution and bump up the global illumination and that will do a similar thing you can do that and that's something I've done in the past but I think what we can do and what we can get away with is leaving those at default and instead just using a good old portal light so let's get a portal light essentially what this does is it will tell cinema where the light is coming from and where to focus the gi bounces and it will give you additional kind of gi bounces in that area so the way you use it is you basically find where the opening is where the majority of your lighting is coming from and you place it right up against kind of that area so you want to get it pretty close to where our glass is and just make sure it's filling that whole gap so i'm going to go to the front view and just extend the size of this so that I'm making sure that it's kind of filling that whole space and what you'll see straight away is that we're getting more light come through into the interior of our scene so if I disable the portal light you can see it's quite a bit darker and if I enable it we now get more of that blue light in there from the sky and it's also just brightening the inside so I could maybe bump up the exposure to one that'll make it even brighter we get more of that sun come through and yeah it just feels a lot better overall uh, the one thing you will get is you'll get that really heavy blue tint which we are getting which is okay but um it looks a little bit too intense and it's obviously adjusting the colors which we don't want so we can go to the sky and drop the saturation down so for example i could put it to like 0.2 where we still have some of those cooler tones coming in but now it's reduced it and it feels a lot more neutral the only problem then is now the sky is grayscale so what i'm going to do for now is i'm just going to leave it at one we'll have these blue tints but I think once we apply the textures it will it will work out and honestly this probably is the most realistic anyway like you would get these cooler tints from the sky so yeah it makes it makes sense one thing I've just noticed is these slats look like they're kind of floating off the walls so I'm going to move them so they're pushed up against the wall a bit more and there we go that looks a bit better I don't know why they were floating there we go and I'll again just copy that x value to the other one I'll fix that and also I'm actually just going to get rid of one of the clones so I'm going to set it to 11 just so we have more of a gap between this one at the end which yeah I think that that looks a lot better now that feels a bit neater yeah cool I, I, I think there's some things I want to fix later on but for now let's just focus on the lighting because there's a few other things I want to talk about we can see in the distance we can see the black line from the sky and the way to fix this is just adjust the horizon height so if I just refresh the render view, go to horizon height, and instead of having it at zero, just set it to like minus 0 0.1, and that will fix that. And you could also blur the horizon as well ever so slightly, uh, and that will just blur that. Another thing I want to talk about, and this isn't lighting per se, but it will affect the overall look of your image, is something in the Redshift camera. So Obviously you guys have heard me talk about Redshift post effects before, but there's another setting which I've started playing with recently. And this is under the optical tab, and this is the exposure type. And I can actually pause the render view for this, I believe. Uh, so by default, it will be set to EV only. So essentially what that means is it's only using the exposure to affect the, I guess, <laughs> the exposure of the image, which is fine. You can use this to boost the exposure, but what would be more realistic is if it took into account the ISO and the aperture, which is what a realistic camera or what a real life camera would use. It would use the combination of exposure, ISO and aperture to affect how much light is being let into the sensor. So what I've started to do recently is use the filmic option and you'll see straight away how it boosts the exposure. And that's because now it's taking into consideration the ISO. You can see before it was grayed out and now it's enabled it. So straight away, it's gonna brighten the scene up a little bit. Um, I find that it also kind of lifts the shadows. Like even if you weren't to overexpose it, I feel like it lifts the shadows a little bit. You could see maybe if I drop down the, the ISO to something more like what we had originally, but maybe around there roughly. Yeah, it kind of just feels like it lifts the shadows ever so slightly, but maybe it's just from the increased exposure. But yeah, I'm gonna set the ISO at 50. And that's just gonna boost that a little bit. And then, 
I'm going to leave the aperture kind of as it is. Um, but that's just going to help to lift things a little bit. And then the next thing I would do is go to the color correction tab and enable tone mapping. And that's just going to clamp those white values and those highlights so nothing gets completely overexposed. A point 0.2 might be a bit too intense. So essentially that means it's going to clamp it by 80%. So there's 20% highlights essentially. So let's go to like point 0.3 and that'll brighten it a little bit. Uh, you can play with this and see kind of what look and feel you're getting. But because this is quite a bright scene and exteriors do tend to be quite bright, I'm going to go for something like 0.3 and that still keeps some nice bright highlights in there without them getting too overexposed. So yeah, that is the lighting. So we got the sun, the sky, the portal, and we've also changed the camera to filmic and we've enabled tone mapping just to stop any overexposure. We could have, of course, used dome lights and I did some experiments with dome lights and you can get some really nice results, but I thought just for the sake of following along for the tutorial, it's just easier if we use the built-in tools in Redshift, but definitely explore some dome lights and some HDRs because they can give you really nice lighting and sometimes, or actually a lot of the time, more realistic than the sun and the sky because they are based on, you know, real world environments. So definitely have a play with them. In this case, I'm just going to use the Redshift Sky and Sun. Cool. So I think that's it for the lighting. I guess let's dive into texturing and actually start to bring this to life. Thank you guys for watching this video. Like I said, this is an extract from Patreon. So if you want to watch the full process from start to finish of building this scene all the way from modeling to lighting to texturing and post-production and ultimately creating a really beautiful final render, then you can watch that over on Patreon. Like I said, it is one of my most popular videos. So definitely go and check it out if it's something you're interested in. Thank you again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, peace.